Hi there, Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network. Thanks for tuning in to Debt Bites, our YouTube channel where we talk about all things of debt and credit. Today, I want to talk about what it means to be judgment proof or collection proof. And this is a phrase that's tossed about all over the place. Um, typically, when somebody is dealing with debts they cannot manage and you stop paying, and depending on who your creditors are and how long you haven't paid and the state you live in actually because there's limitations to how long you can be sued, ultimately you reach a place or at least you should be thinking about what's going to happen when you reach a place where you're sued and you have no defenses and you just, you know, it is what it is and you don't want to file bankruptcy. Are you collection proof or judgment proof? And the only time you have to care about that kind of thing is, is if somebody does sue you, gets a judgment against you, and then relevant to your state's laws, what is protected and what is not. So typically, somebody with just income from exempt sources, like Social Security, like some pensions, these things are exempt. They can't be garnished right from the source. In other words, somebody with a credit card judgment against you cannot go to the federal government where your Social Security funds are issued from and say, hey, we got this judgment in state court, you know, fork over some of this money. They can't do that. And so once it lands in your bank account, it used to be that there was quite a bit of risk associated with commingled funds and things like that. But now your bank has been instructed to be very aware of your Social Security funds or exempt funds. This is somebody who, for the most part, could be considered collection proof, judgment proof, just from a resource perspective. In other words, if the only income you're ever getting into your bank account or receive at all is from exempt sources, no worries, right? However, there are some issues. If you let too much of those funds build up, which is normally not the case, somebody who just has that as a source of income probably burns through it pretty quickly. Or you have other concerns like assets that are not exempt. So you're thinking, oh, well, they can't get me because, you know, these are the only money I have. But what about if you own property? If you own property, um, most states are going to allow a lien to be placed on that property from a judgment and then eventually, even if it's after you pass and the property moves on to your heirs, it has to be resolved. You go to refinance, do a reverse mortgage, um, sell, the judgment lien is going to get resolved and it's growing with interest and things like that. So you're not necessarily judgment proof if you have exempt income, but you still have assets, even to the extent that your car could be in excess of what's exempt in your state. That's a very state specific thing, right? You can ask about that in the comments and I can tell you, hey, this is, you know, this is where your exemptions are in your state. Um, what is exempt in your bank account? Actually, you could not be working and be unemployed and not even have unemployment, but still have money in your bank account that is not, you're not on social security, you're not getting exempt income from whatever exempt source, but you have money in your bank account. And that you could wake up, you go to bed one morning with $4,000 in your bank account, wake up and it's gone. Or to the extent that your state allows exempt cash in your bank account. I think the best state for that is Massachusetts, something north of $2,000 in your bank account. New York is really close to that and some other states. And then you've got places where, you know, pretty good debtor protection laws, like in Texas, right, where you, it's really hard to garnish somebody even, uh, but there's not a penny exempt if it's in your bank account and it's not from an exempt source. So to be judgment proof, to really, really be judgment proof, really, really basically sucks because it means that you have just exempt income, just exempt sources, and you have no assets that can be leaned, attached, or levied. And so that's, that's the context of being judgment proof. And you may not stay that way. So. One of the things that happens a lot because of our website and our videos, so much topic around uh, debt and credit triage situations, emergency kind of things. Um, I find that people do whatever they need to do or ignore debt for whatever period of time with which there just are no solutions. Um, you know, whatever happened, whatever hardship and it, you know, stayed static uh, and you bounce back and then you're married again and you can afford to pay and or do things because you, you lost a second income after a divorce or a health issue. Okay, so those things can improve over time. And you had gotten sued, got judgment against you, and now it's time to bounce back. So somebody gets suing you and you're thinking, why do they spend all this time suing people that are obviously can't pay? Well, the point is, is you may not stay that way. Why wouldn't they? 
If it's five years later and the judgment's good for 10 years and can be renewed for, renewed for another 10 years, and that's another topic, is, is that judgments don't just go away, like the statute of limitations that there is to sue you legitimately. Once they sue you and have a judgment, that gets renewed in most states, and sometimes for life. So there is a point to suing somebody for $500. There is a point to suing somebody who on paper looks like they can't pay and that things are gonna stay that way because they may not. See you on the next video.